Hello reader friends and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am so happy because it is finally spring. It is finally April. It's my birthday month. It's gonna be sunny next week. I swear to you, Idaho does not no seasons because this week it is literally 40 and cold and next week it's gonna be 70 and sunny. I don't understand it, but I'm not complaining. My birthday's coming up, it's on the 21st and I'm so excited. It's kind of gonna be a weird birthday though because the last two that I have had, me and my boyfriend have gone on trips, but we're both trying to save some money um, because we're going to San Diego in June. So we're gonna stay home for this birthday, but I'm also really excited about it because I really want to do like an Alice in Wonderland themed like tea party type of brunch thing. So this month is just gonna be really good. April is always really good. It's when things just start getting better. So I'm looking forward to that to say the least. But as you can see by the title, today we are going to be going through my April TBR. Now usually I do like a choosing my TBR video, but I already kind of had books in mind that I wanted for this month. So we're just gonna kind of go through that. But before we get too far into the video, I do wanna talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Book of the Month. If you've been watching my videos, then you know that I have been using Book of the Month for a while now. If you don't know what Book of the Month is, it is an online fast growing book subscription service with a mission to promote new and emerging authors. So each month they have a team that vets through hundreds of books to then have us choose from. So you could do your one Book of the Month Month, or you could do a book of the month and add on something I really enjoy about book of the month as well is that they are risk-free so for any reason if you ever need to skip a month then you can do so without being charged and each month is seriously like Christmas because your books come in this cute little blue box and on the top it says warning this box may elicit excitement and trust me it does every time and then when you open the box it's got these cute little cute little words on it. It says you've got great taste. No book of the month. You've got great taste. Two books I chose for this month are The Only Survivors by Megan Miranda and I Have Some Questions for You by Rebecca Mackay. These are both um, like mystery thrillers. This one I believe is more of like a fiction thriller type of thing. Like I think it has more like adult fiction elements than like thriller thriller elements. That's just what I've heard, so I don't know 100%, but this one, um, the little blurb on the top says, a successful film professor and podcaster, Bodie Kane, is content to forget her past. So all I know about this is that it's got some like podcast elements, it's got some like mystery elements, some thriller, thriller elements, and those three things put together are like for me. And this one is a thriller thriller. The little blurb on the top says seven hours in the past, seven days in the present, seven survivors remaining, who would you save? So from what I'm aware about this one is that there was like some kind of accident um, when these people I believe were in high school and now one of the survivors has passed as well. So now they made a pact to come together every year to just keep each other safe and accountable and just make sure like everyone's like doing all right. But then I think another survivor ends up passing away. And so now it's this mystery of like, are they getting killed off like one by one or like what's going on? So I'm excited for this one. It sounds very intriguing. Book of the month really does have the best pricing for new books, especially hardback books. I feel like they can range from like 20 to 30 dollars but you can get your first book box today for 9.99 with code spring a few other really popular titles that i've gotten from book of the month from their backlist titles are the love hypothesis days darker tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow i got the invisible life of addie larue from there so they've got a lot of really amazing titles to choose from not only for their actual book of the month picks but also for their add-ons i will put the link down below so you guys can get your first box for 9.99 with code spring with that let's get back into the video okay so getting into my April TBR, first of all, I did read the fifth book in the Shatter Me series. Oh my gosh, it was so good. Oh my gosh. I, Kate, I like hated the fourth book and then the fifth book, I didn't really like the beginning of it, but then like towards the end, ugh, I sobbed, sobbed. So this month I'm really hoping to finish the Shatter Me series. So all I have left is Imagine Me and the novella Believe Me. And I did get about a hundred pages through this yesterday. But the thing is, is that I'm kind of skipping through a lot of this because it's just, I. something that I've noticed with the Shatter Me books is how much detail that she puts into some things that don't need it. For example, like 
if Kenji is struggling, she'll put it into like an entire page of just this like poetic explanation that just, it just doesn't need to be that long to the point where I just start to skim because it is poetic and I, I like the way she's writing it, but it's just like, we don't need that many words to describe one feeling, you know? So I feel like this book is just like way longer than it needs to be. So I'm kind of like skimming through some of it. And I really hate that we don't get Warner's point of view in this book. That was the whole reason I started loving the second half of the series was because it had other people's point of views. But this one just has Juliet and Kenji's. And I do love Kenji, but like I would have liked Warner's point of view way more over Kenji's. That's just my opinion. So I have that book and then I have the novella and then I'm done with that series. But then my next read is one that I actually picked up on my trip, so over my, my last video, and that is Reckless by Cornelia Funk. This is the Petrified Flesh. I think Reckless is just like the um series. This one, I have been craving some like darker, like gothic fantasies, so this kind of is that. And you can kind of see by the cover, like it, it looks very gothic fantasy to me. But this one, the little synopsis on the back says, Jacob has uncovered the doorway to another world hidden behind a mirror. It is a place of dark magic and enchanted objects, scheming dwarves and fearsome ogres, fairies born from water and men born from stone. Here he hunts the treasure and seeks adventure in the company of Fox, a beautiful shape-shifting girl who guides and guards him. But now Jacob's younger brother has followed him into the mirrored world and a deadly curse has been spoken. Jacob must risk his life to reverse it before his brother is turned to stone forever. I just, I love Cornelia Funk's like worlds that she, like I love the Inkheart world and I just love fantasy books that have like the ogres and the fairies and it's just very like, like woodsy, I guess, if that makes sense. I love those kinds of fantasies. So I'm, I'm really excited for this one. Speaking of another kind of gothic fantasy type of springy book, I do really, I don't have the physical copy of this, but I did just get a Kindle. Look at this little guy. I never realized how tiny Kindles were. Like I, whenever I watch videos or like see photos of Kindles on like Bookstagram, I always think that they're like a mini iPad kind of size, but this thing is literally like the size of my hand. So if you're thinking about getting Kindle, just keep that in mind. They are very, very small. But with that said, I do really want to read Belladonna this month. Um, I don't know why I've never really been in like a gothic fantasy mood, but something about it is just really, really tugging at my strings today. So I think I'm gonna go to Barnes and Noble actually and pick up Belladonna and then um, I wanna get, there's like this middle grade called Spineless, but I don't know if I'm gonna read that this month, but I also wanna get that one. Um, but also if I can get Belladonna on Kindle, then I might just do that because my book buying is getting a little bit out of control and I really need to start saving money. So if I can get it cheaper on Kindle, then we might have to do that. Anyway, so that's another one that I really want to read. Um, And then my next one is going to be Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers. This one is actually my um book club pick for April over on Patreon. So if you're not on my Patreon and you want to join the book club, then you should. It is going to be linked below. I'm really excited to read this, especially with my Patreons. I, this is going to be the first month where we actually like read a book together and talk about it and like actually have our book club because I, I started my Patreon last month, but we like had already gone into the month. So I didn't want to pick a book. Like I, I just, I wanted to do it at the beginning of a month. So I'm so excited to be reading with you guys. This one is a little murder mystery. If you've read Dial A for Aunties, um, it's by the same author. So it's kind of that like cozy mystery type of vibe. But this one follows our main character, Vera, and she is this like elderly woman who runs a tea shop and there is a murder. And so it's pretty much the whole book is trying to figure out like who murdered this person. <laughs> I love cozy murder mysteries. So this one is very, very highly anticipated. My next one is going to be 10,000 Doors of January. I have had this book for so long and this is also on my spring TBR. So it'll be nice to kind of knock out like a spring TBR and an April TBR book. But this one follows her main character, January. She moves into this mansion. I do, I'm not remembering why she moved into this mansion, but as she's like browsing around the castle, I think she finds a book, one that tells a tale of secret doors, love, adventure, and danger. And for the first time, January realizes she can escape her story and sneak into someone else's. So it's just very magical, very whimsical, very spring. I haven't been like super in the mood to pick this book up 
until now. So, cause I am such a mood reader and I've just been really craving something very magical and whimsical. And I've heard a lot of really good things about this book. So I just think it's gonna be a perfect springy April read. Next, this is actually one that I just recently got and that is Every Heart a Doorway by Sh Seanan McGuire. This one, it's a pretty long series and, but they're all really, really short books. So I'm very much looking forward to having a short book long series type of thing because I just can't do long series with long books. Like I, I'm trying to work through the Crave series by Tracy Wolf, and it's just so hard because the books are so long. So I feel like it's just never ending, but these are short reads and they're quick reads and it's a long series. So I, I just think I'm gonna enjoy it a lot more. But this series is about, um, so like these characters like Alice going into Wonderland and um, like all these characters that go into these different worlds. This book is, I think, like when they come back from those worlds, like go to this school for wayward children, I think is what it's called. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure, but it's just like the aftermath of like where the kids go, like after they come back from the worlds that they stumbled into, I guess. So just another very magical, whimsical, short, fun read. My next one was also on my spring TBR and that's the Encyclopedia of Fairies or Emily Lau's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Very springy, cozy fantasy, little subplot of romance, fairies. It's a little bit academia. It is about this professor who is writing the first encyclopedia of like fairy life, I guess I would say. Very highly anticipated. Rachel um, actually just read this one. I'll link her uh, channel or put a picture of it up here but she just read this one and absolutely loved it so that just made me want to read it even more <laughs> so very highly anticipated my next one is going to be the wonderland trials by sarah ella i'm actually on a buying streak of getting every single alice in wonderland retelling that i can get my hands on so i got this one i just got the looking glass wars i have a few on my kindle because I really want to do a video where I compile and read some of like the Alice in Wonderland retellings and I want to compare and contrast and just go go through them. So I really want to read at least one Alice in Wonderland retelling a month, if not two, because I think I have like eight of them right now on my TBR. This in short is about um, a girl, I believe her name is Alice. Her older sister is arrested for having an infamous wonder gene, the key to unlocking the curious wonderland reality. Um, she gets an invitation to play for Team Heart in the year's annual and often deadly wonderland trials. Players are going missing during the trials. So it's just like a really fun, adventurous wonderland retelling type of book. So I'm loving it. I'm hyped for it. And this is probably going to be one of the first reads of the month. Next, I have a thriller and that is What Lies in the Woods. I think this was actually on one of my more recent TBRs. But this one is about a group of friends who went through a really like traumatic event when they were younger. This girl survived like a very brutal stabbing um, and then it jumps up to like their adulthood and little top part says they were 11 when they sent a killer to prison they were heroes but they were liars so like once they're back in adulthood they're just like trying to figure out what really happened in the woods back when they were younger i've been in a really big thriller mood hopefully this one will quench that craving and then lastly i have six of crows because i have been in the mood to read this book all month all month of march at least and then i started watching the second season of shadow and bone and it just made me really want to read Six of Crows because I still haven't. I wanted to wait until fall to read this because I feel like it's just a really, really good fall book. But at the same time, I want to read it when I'm in the mood for it because what if I'm not in the mood for it in fall and I end up reading it and not loving it as much because I wasn't in the mood for it, you know? So this one I'm also hoping to get to this month. I know it's a very ambitious TBR, but I did read nine books in March. So I feel like 11 books for a TBR isn't too far-fetched for me. But anyway, we have come to the end of my April TBR. I'm so excited for all of these books. Ugh. I hope that April is a, another like really good big reading month for me because I feel like January and December and February, like just the last, besides March, the last couple months before that, I just I was trying to read as much as I could, but I just wasn't in like a huge reading mood. Like every time I tried to pick up a book, I feel like I had to be like doing something else. Like I didn't feel like I was being productive enough. Now that my seasonal depression is kind of starting to 
chill out a bit. I'm starting to want to do more of the things that I like to do. And my health has not been good at all the last like two months. I've been so sick. We're still trying to figure out what's actually going on. I've been to five doctor's appointments in the month of March. Ugh. It's a lot. So since my health isn't doing very good, I've, I've been home a lot more. So I'm hoping that I'm hoping I get better in April, but I'm also like, I'm not expecting to not get better in April, but I'm just, I'm okay with the fact that I'm not doing well right now. And if I need to stay home more than I would like to, then that's also fine because that just gives me more time to read. So I'm at least doing something I like while I'm not feeling good. If that makes sense. But yeah, so this is the end of <laughs> my video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and I hope you guys got some decent recommendations for April if you didn't have um, your TBR put together yet or if you do and there's a lot of books that you're really excited for, definitely list them down below. I love you guys as always. Thank you so much for watching my videos and I will see you in my next one.